What is going on ladies and generals, Jody Slayer here, bringing you episode 23 of my Borderlands 2 Seraph Weapon series. Today, I'm going to be showing you the second Seraph Weapon from Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, the newest DLC for Borderlands 2 known as the Seeker. Now, in my case in this picture, it is the Rhythmic Seeker. In your case, the prefix of this gun may change, but it will be some variation of the Seeker. Now, to, like I said, this is part of the Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, so you will have to have that DLC for that. If you're unfamiliar where the the Seraph Shop is actually located within this DLC. Take any fast travel within the game, fast travel to Flame Rock Refuge. That is like the main little city here in the DLC. And then you're gonna, once you get to Flame Rock, you're gonna be on the left hand portion of the map. Work your way over here within the red circle to the right. And that is where the Seraph Shop is actually going to be located. Now, with the rest of all the Seraph weapons, the Seraph weapons in this DLC. Um, are really not that great. In fact, I really don't use any of them other than the antagonist shield. The antagonist shield is actually a decent shield that is a Seraph shield uh, within this DLC. Now, you know, when we, it's funny because when the Seraph weapons first came out, we knew that it was like a Seraph version of most legendaries, but we really expected like an upgrade to some of the popular legendaries that would just wow us, be something extraordinary. But it failed to do that. Now I can see why they're nothing overpowered for the fact that you can't just simply go into the shops and buy them, but everybody knows that it is a pain in the butt to get these Seraph crystals from some of these invincibles. And I want to point something out since this is a Seraph episode, it does rely on Seraph crystals. You you cannot get Seraph Crystals within the game unless you are on the highest playthrough that is like enabled on your system. So if you've got Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, you cannot get Seraph Crystals on True Vault Hunter mode or the normal mode. You've actually got to play on the highest, you know, highest playthrough that you've got. Now, say you're on Xbox, you know. Uh, and you've got like the first couple DLCs and you've not uploaded or downloaded, I guess would be the right term, the Ultimate Vault Hunter mode. You might be able to get uh, Seraph Crystals on the second playthrough there, but if you've updated your game to where it's running off of this, you know, which is required the third playthrough, you're not going to get Seraph Crystals unless you play on the highest difficulty, like the highest playthrough that you've got. Not really sure why they did that. It kind of hinders people. They say that Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, which is the third playthrough, is not for everybody and they say that if you can't handle it solo, you know, go back to Ultimate Vault Hunter, or go back to True Vault Hunter mode. Uh, but they disabled Seraph Crystals in the second playthrough, so it doesn't make much sense. It is kind of a crock of shit! I will say some myself, but you know, I can see why, but you know, these Seraph guns aren't really even worth going for. The Seraph weapons, in my opinion, just suck huge marbles, um, and it's a pain in the butt to go for these Seraph Crystals. So, you know, to each their own, maybe some of you want out there, out there want some of these Seraph weapons, uh, not really me, but I'm, like I usually do, I'm going to read from the wiki here about the Seeker. So in case I leave any details out, you guys shall hear that now. It says the Seeker is a Seraph Assault Rifle manufactured by Torg that appears exclusively in Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep. The Seeker can only be obtained from trading with the Seraph Fender in Flame Rock Refuge. Now special weapon abilities in Red Texas says, oh yeah, that's fair, dot, dot, dot. Shots fired home in on enemies. Each shot consumes two ammo. Now uses in description. The Seeker can be very deadly rifle when used in the right context, having very high accuracy and accuracy recovery rate. Surprisingly very low recoil for a Torque Assault Rifle and the ability to have homing rockets. That's like the biggest plus about this Assault Rifle I'll go to in here in just a minute. It says, and the ability to have homing rockets that deal above average damage and explosive damage. All combined make very amazing results. This being said, the homing ability can be used to twist various situations to the player's advantage, having the ability to shoot round to enemies taking cover or even deal with low to medium range flying targets with ease. Now the drawbacks of this gun are noticeable, however, it has a very low fire rate even for a Torg assault rifle, it uses 2 ammo per shot and has a below average reload speed. It can also cannot score critical hits. Now that is one of the main keys that I cannot stand this gun is it cannot score critical hits. If you know me and you know me well, I like aiming for the face. That's what she said. I like go all over the face every time I do go. We're getting off track right now, but I do go for those critical shots, you know. What I'm saying, and more times than not, it's for a headshot. Now, with these homing abilities, that is why this really can't get the critical shots, uh, the critical damage, because the way that this homes in, it homes in on, like, their belt buckle area. It's just going 
hone in and homing in on that, you know, that specific enemy. Now, if you're not familiar what homing does actually mean, that means that you can see here through the gameplay that we're showing you now, that you just have to shoot somewhat in the vicinity of enemies, and those, you know, the bullets will quote unquote home in on that enemy, basically just seeks them out, hence the name Seeker. You know, it just like tr it targets them and will not go, you know, it just goes straight for them regardless. Now, you have to shoot somewhat in the vicinity. You can't just shoot and go home in on any target. So you do have to particularly aim at a certain enemy. But nonetheless, you know, it doesn't do much damage whatsoever. I've got the B-Shield on. It still doesn't do much damage at all. Now, what I was saying, I would point out later. Now, this is a very good weapon. I think we've all been there, done that. Say you've got a group of enemies. You're going ham. You're going ham. You finally go into second win, and then they all go behind cover. There's always that one guy that's got, like, the spice of life, just barely any life left. And you're like, oh my god, you prick, if you just give me one more shot. That is where this assault rifle comes into play. If you've got this in your inventory and you go down and there's that one dude sitting off there mocking you, you can always get this bad boy out and just shoot just a little above his head and it will actually home in on them and seek them out and find them and maybe giving you that extra win. That is like the only thing that I can see valuable with this assault rifle. I did not like it at all. It just doesn't do very much damage. As all the, you know, I don't really like, I told, I said this in previous videos, I don't really like the assault or the uh, explosive weapons in this game other than the unkept herald. Um, I mean, but to each your own. Leave in the comments, is the seeker one of those weapons that it's just beastly for you? When the enemy are slagged it does a little bit bonus damage but it doesn't do much the slow fire rate and stuff like that um i don't know it's pretty cool how it does home in but uh leave in the comments man does any of you guys out there seek the seeker and it's like your go-to weapon and leave in the comments you know what do you guys think about all these surf weapons in the game are they kind of like eh or are they just like, yeah, fuck that, get out of here. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed episode 23 of my Surf Weapon series. I'm going to bring it back, dudes. I got to get these ones from the Dragons, and then we're going to be going again. But anyways, nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you later. Enjoy the shift code, my young ones. Peace.